Robert Gibbons, professor de l'Institut Tecnològic de Massachusetts, va impartir la lliçó inaugural de la Facultat de Ciències Econòmiques de la UPF del curs 2016 a 2017, patrocinada pels laboratoris Dr. Esteve. Gibbons es va donar a conèixer l'any 1992 amb el seu llibre sobre la teoria dels jocs, però el seu enfoc ha anat evolucionant fins a ocupar-se de l'economia de les organitzacions, tema sobre el que va tractar la lliçó. La taula va ser presidida pel degà de la Facultat de Ciències Econòmiques, Walter García Fontes, pel secretari general de la UPF, Pelegrí Viader, per la responsable de tresoreria dels laboratoris Dr. Esteve, Pilar Miracle, i per Juan José Ganuza, expert en organització industrial i teoria macroeconòmica, qui va introduir la lliçó. Gibbons va començar la xerrada celebrant poder parlar en un espai on el món dels negocis es trobi amb l'economia. Most places don't have this kind of joint uh, contact and, and interaction between business and economics, right? And that, that's exactly what I'm hoping to talk about and what we're trying to do at MIT. A continuació, va preguntar-se si l'economia seria diferent si s'ensenyés més als alumnes sobre les organitzacions i les institucions. També va voler aprofundir sobre què és una organització. Would economics be any different if we taught first year graduate students or undergraduates more about organizations in particular and institutions more generally? So what is an organization? So of course firms are organizations, but lots of other things are organizations. Social movements are organizations. The legislature is trying to be organized. And again, you know, supply chains and things like that. I want to think about not only organizations. I think part of what's important to do here is to think about other things that are organized even if they aren't necessarily organizations. Per explicar la importància de l'estudi de les organitzacions des d'una perspectiva econòmica, Gibbons va utilitzar una metàfora d'un extraterrestre que arriba a la Terra i que pot discernir quin tipus de transaccions es donen entre els humans. So the Martian comes to visit Earth and this telescope reveals a certain distinction between social structures, right? It can tell are you and I interacting in a market? or are you and I interacting in an organization? And so it's sort of scanning the Earth with this telescope, right? It flies around and around the Earth, and it's, it's picking up one color when it sees a market transaction and a different color when it sees a transaction inside an organization or an interaction inside an organization. And this Martian winds up asking, so why do you guys call that a market economy? Is, isn't there a heck of a lot of stuff going on inside organizations? Com a exemple del potencial del camp d'economia de les organitzacions, Gibbons va mencionar el rescat estatal de les companyies d'automòbils dels Estats Units. One question is, you know, why are organizations such a mess? And yeah, so let, let's go to the other end of the spectrum, right? We had to have a huge bailout of our car companies. Yeah, General Motors needed enormous amounts of support. Is that because the people in General Motors were stupid? Or because the organization couldn't get something done? So I want to offer the idea that, and I, you know, this is really coming from Jim March, the organization theorist at Stanford. Why could it be, why might it be, that organizations, I'll say, seem less rational than their members? A continuació, va explicar que el seu camp d'estudi no ha fet més que créixer els darrers anys. Interestingly, to me, when I started the National Bureau of Economic Research Working Group in Organizational Economics in 2002, there almost weren't any people who woke up in the morning and said, I'm an organizational economist. And we teach a whole year-long PhD course in organizational economics. And at the end of last year, we had three students search the last five years of nine journals, some journals you've heard of in economics, and they came up with 400 papers in the last five years that they were thought were related to the course that they just had. Okay, so something's happening out there. La part final de la conferència va estar dedicada a repensar el terme cultura. Culture is super important, but it's so easy to say, oh yeah, this organization, it's underperforming, you know, it's the culture, right? And you, you don't know what it is, and you certainly don't know how to fix it. Okay, so don't use culture that way, please. Gibbons va acabar la conferència amb un interessant exemple pràctic sobre com un canvi en el tipus de relacions entre els infermers i els doctors en alguns hospitals dels Estats Units havia propiciat un important descens en les infeccions de sang. Peter Pronovos, the last author on that paper, did amazing work at Johns Hopkins University getting the bloodstream infection rates down. Okay? Then the state of Michigan called up and said, can you help us? They show up and they say, yeah, you know, doctors should wash their hands. 
and they should use this super strong antiseptic, and they should drape the patients when they're changing the, the catheters that in an intensive care unit give you your medicine and your food. So the, the checklist is really very simple, right? You know, wash your hands, remove unnecessary catheters, drape the patient, use a super strong antiseptic. And at Hopkins, the first thing they did was post a checklist, and bloodstream infections went down a little. But then the doctor said, you know, we're busy saving lives, which is true. And I couldn't find the antiseptic, and I couldn't find the sterile drapes to cover the patient. So they put those things. They put the antiseptic and the drapes on a cart, and the bloodstream infections fell a little more. And then they did the culture change exercise. Okay? And the culture change exercise tries to change how we're interacting with each other. They ask the nurses, agree or disagree, strongly or weakly, with the statement, I frequently have trouble expressing disagreement with staff physicians in this ICU. Okay, so is it okay for me to say to you, the doctor, excuse me, did you wash your hands? So, what we find in this first difference regression is the ICUs that had a big decline in the bloodstream infection rate are the ones where the nurses answer to the question, I frequently have trouble expressing disagreement, improved. They become not frequently having that problem. You may look at organizations and go, ugh, you know, what's wrong with those guys? Remember that if it were an easy problem, we might have not integrated. We might have just left it to be a market problem. Nationwide program in the US saving thousands of lives and millions of dollars by, yeah, a checklist, yeah, a cart, and a culture change program. Finalitzada la conferència, alguns alumnes van poder preguntar directament les seves inquietuds.